we move within a context that we are typically unaware of and that it gives us the illusion of action and it gives us an illusion of agency and actual agency is is um, is actually uh, intermittent it we only have um, moments of agency and we are often um, okay for our viewers and myself uh, agency agency it's like well it's like um, like if uh, an example would be is is if 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 you if you say uh, right now we got what's this this uh, Uma Uma Thur- Thurman Uma Thurman she's yes. doing that she's the, the little girl with the climate change Uma Thurman no no that's <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not Thurberg I think okay, is Thurberg, the last okay. yeah yeah okay okay but Uma Thurberg good close call almost <laughs> I'm glad I caught it before it <laughs> went further but uh, okay, all right keep so, going so you know this so. You, you you want to do something about this climate change thing, right, and so right. you say, okay, well, I want to um, I want to generate some agency. I will act in a way that will change things for the better. So that's an example of agency. Okay. But here's the catch: if you, if so, what you say, I'm going to recycle. Yes. And that isn't that that's necessarily not a bad thing to do, but it's much less agentic than you might imagine, okay. because um, the act of recycling and not going further and asking questions like, wait a minute, where does most of the wakes come from? What are the right. governments and corporations that are actually doing 99% of it? Then what happens is you are you have a false sense of agency. You become complacent, and the problem continues to grow in the background, which okay, is what so we see you, with climate change. All right. So you tell yourself, "Hey, I've made an effort here. Things are going to get better, and it's going to expand." However, you're just a small. Cog. Well, you continue to be a cog in the machine that keeps running. Okay. And okay. so that was an image I used in the paper that much, many of our efforts are just shining the cog. And the machine keeps running. And we keep doing it. Okay. So the we'll goal would be: how do we how do we change the context, the horizon of meaning that sort of defines and directs us? And so um, that's where Zizek, for instance, talks about this. But it's it's part of uh, Elaine Badu's philosophy and I'm other folks. Like how do we how do we um, enact some form of revolution or movement forward or backward? They're all wary of this notion of progression because that in of itself can be a way of being sort of bound to context and to horizons without moving outside of them. Yeah, and it's almost a, like GJ says this all the time. We think we're doing something, but wait, he starts to unravel it yeah. to us to the this point where we're, where we're not making progress it's not at all. Um, we're just kind of mm-hmm. stuck in some things. So, but what well, couldn't it be that each individual doing their part? Um, by recycling or some some other measure, and we've got thousands, hundred thousands, millions, maybe doing something. Does that not affect the change in the bigger system? I well, mean, I don't know. It is a step, and you don't want to you don't want to keep the acting locally or personal responsibility out of the equation. But uh, he uses a one an example when people were protesting the Iraq War. Right. Um, there were um, set aside times when people could go and protest and millions of people did sure and so they go and they protest and when the protest's over they go home and the war goes on and so right literally built into the system is um a you're allowed a false sense of action so the machine can keep moving okay does that false make sense? sense yeah yeah it does. and so for yeah. instance what would have happened if if um uh, and he uses, I think I've said this before, and it always gets people upset when I say it, but there's a quote from him that the problem with Hitler is Hitler wasn't violent enough. Right. And that, I remember <laughs> that on an earlier episode. Right. And when I got back in my chair, I asked you the question, you need to unpack that just a little bit well, for me and for others. Uh, so what that I, means I think is, I know where GJ's going, but you, you yeah. better tell us, I think. Well, you know, the, the literal... Uh, the political statement that that Hitler fl- uh, well, um, hung his flag over was let's make Germany great again this whole notion of the return of the Third Reich was literally let's get great again we, we hear that somewhere else don't we? I, I don't know, <laughs> but, I, don't know. <laughs> and, I think we do <laughs> and the whole idea behind that is is that it's 
it's ultimately not in a, and I'm, I'm not knocking our conservative brothers and sisters because they have an important part to play in, in political discourse, sure. but it represents conservative, a poisonous conservative move. It's a step backward to preserve something that was never actually really there, and it doesn't, there, there's no change. In fact, right. the same war that propelled Germany into poverty happened all over again. Mm -hmm. Because if once again that they the coordinates the horizon of their meaning was not altered, right? So the goal would be how do we, how do we, uh, how do we come up with some way that moves us forward? The recycling, collective action, nothing wrong with it. That's cool. But what happens? How do we change the system? <laughs> <laughs>